right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Dragonworks, where size matters. And this morning, we're talking a 2300 cc's of raw torque between your legs. That's right. 2005 Triumph Rocket 3. She is a monster. For sure. So how you folks been doing? Yeah, it's been a little while since I did a video. That's because I got hit with what's known as the perfect storm. Uh, at least it seemed that way. I had a group of bikes come in at the same time that ended up needing way more than what was originally anticipated. Because I can only go by what the owner tells me on the phone when they book their appointment. And then when they get them in here, they say, check it out and tell me what's wrong. And a lot of times the owner does not know what all is wrong with their motorcycle. So some of those are still, in fact, in here and have been in here for a little while working through these problems. And a lot of times I start videos introductory and I'm all happy and then it turns sour once I start going through the bike and I don't like to post videos on people's hardship. Um, right now I have, like I say, I got four or five of them in here right now and we're going to go over some of them individually. We're getting things worked out. It's everything's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I try when, when I come across problems, uh, you can ask any customer ever. I do my best to eliminate the financial hardship and I put some of my own sweat into their projects very, very often um, and what have you to help them through the process to make it a little less painful. That's just who I am. I'm passionate about this. This is my life. It's not only my business. Uh, it's more my life than it even is a business. But anyway, we'll talk about each individual one on their own video. Today, we got the 2005 Triumph Rocket 3. And yes, I did an introductory video to this. Uh, I think I posted it on YouTube. And then shortly after, um, we ran into a lot of work and the customer was pretty upset. Uh, not at me by any means, but uh, pretty upset at the previous owner. But anyway, he had to bite the bullet. He was already in it. And so we proceeded. Uh, the very first thing that happened is the customer actually rode the bike. Uh, I'm sorry, the previous owner, sorry about the handshake there. The previous owner actually rode the bike to the customer's house, problem free. It checked out good. He left and then they decided to ride it and they started it up and that's when the old radiator busted loose and spewed all of the coolant out everywhere. Um, that's what started the issue. Um, then I think well, obviously, the guy was trying to uh, work out an overheating issue because uh, in a bag of extra parts came brand new temperature sensor and brand new thermostat, and the guy had to order the radiator. Well, so then <laughs> one of the reasons the guy never installed the stuff is because it goes way back in there. And so I guess he just left it overheat and overheat until it started busting out the old radiator. And uh, so he doctored it up and sold it, basically is what happened. And uh, now my customer and I are stuck with the aftermath, but we're gaining on it. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna post up, if I haven't already, while I'm talking here, some pictures of what I went through to get to that. So the thermostat housing is right there. Eh, it doesn't look too bad, right? Probably could get that. I don't have any light on it, folks, there you go. Well, way in back beside that and under the throttle bodies is the temperature sensor. Well, you can't get to that. No, they wouldn't put that anywhere convenient. So you have to strip the tank off. Uh, behind this cover is the intake, the, uh, I'm sorry, the air cleaner and the throttle bodies. And you take them off so you can get this oil tank off. Um, this is a separate oil tank from the engine. It unbolts and pulls off. You got to drain all the oil out, and then at that time, you can actually access the temperature sensor, which is mysteriously hiding back in there. Um, whole lot of work. 
because also I found there was uh, fuel lines that were bad I had to replace. There was so much stuff that had to come off of this bike just to put in that one uh, little temperature sensor. So also I got to next week, I'm going to have to pull these forks off here and got to do the fork seals because all the oil has gone out of them and the bike is basically almost tipping over. Um, this is pretty common when I get bikes in, they don't want to stay up on the kickstand. This is where the bike should be like that. Okay. It should be leaning like that. Sorry. I wish I had somebody filming me one day. I will. But then when you let go, shoot, she sinks because there's no oil left. And the guy, uh, he wiped all the oil off really well before he got it here. And I found all these traces where he didn't wipe so well. Um, not, not the customer, the previous owner. So he knew that was a problem, but, uh, yeah, I got to rebuild all that. Uh, anyway, I got a lot of work done on this thing, but I got some more work to go and then there's more work in the future. Um, this thing, uh, the customer has to get it through inspection. So there was an open muffler on here. This one has a baffle, but it's not much of one. I'm going to do a cold start for you here real quick because I got all that stuff tidied up. I'm just going to do the forks next week. The customer just brought me the seals. Stand by. You ready? I bet that wasn't what you were thinking. <laughs> 2.3 liter is what you got right there. It's a inline three cylinder, fuel injected, uh, multi valve. I think it's two intake, two exhaust. Um, when I pulled the throttle bodies off the other side, the inside of the motor looks sparkling beautiful. <laughs> it looks brand new, I don't understand it. And that's the other thing that's really confusing is the previous owner told this customer that it had 160,000 miles on it when the odometer broke. And I don't think that's right at all. 60 sounds right. Uh, that's what we saw on here. Now, I don't know if it works. I haven't taken it for a ride or anything yet. It hasn't been able. But I would say that story would be 60,000. And then they think they went another 15,000 since then. Whatever, that's just a story, but the inside of the motor does not look like that. Uh, it does not look like 160,000 miles, no way, no how, uh, unless they totally rebuilt the thing. But anyway, there was some unfortunate events here, but we're getting them sorted out. I got him taken care of. It's back together. Um, I got to put this wire mesh on the front. There's a cover that goes here that you'll see. Um, maybe I'll flash a picture, but the new radiator is actually a little shorter so there's a front screen, which is right here behind me. This front screen goes on there, but because the radiator is shorter, uh, the bolts don't quite work out and it smashes the screen and makes it bow out. So I got to get some bolts and some spacers for that. And like I said, next week, I'm going to do the forks and then that's going to be it for a while. He's got to get some tires on it and get it through inspection in Maryland which is going to be a little tough, but I think he's going to be okay. All right, guys. So that's what I've been up to. Like I said, I'll do some individual videos um, on the catastrophe. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad, but I had a bunch of them. Um, and one of them just will not let go. We'll talk about that. And I still have some of the old projects waiting on some parts uh, from the customers and what have you, and a bunch of stuff to go over as soon as we can get to it. 2005 Triumph Rocket 3. And when I get done, maybe I'll do a better overall video and try to get this thing out for a ride or something. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Need anything done? Hit me up. Or, well, okay. Anyway, peace out. <laughs>